In this week's episode, I've been doing research on Active Directory and specifically passwords. Did you know that 90% of companies still use Active Directory and it has serious flaws when it comes to passwords and its internal tools will just not cut it. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you the problem and I'm gonna show you some possible solutions. Stay tuned, you will learn something. Hey everyone, Andy here, so nice to see you. You know, this week I've been doing research for a customer, I've been doing some consulting uh, on Active Directory. Did you know that Active Directory is still used by approximately 90% of the world's corporations, either as a standalone solution or as part of hybrid? Now, uh, as part of that, did you realize that Active Directory is 24 years old? And yes, it's gone through a number of updates through the years, but it still has some significant flaws in its original makeup that are now re causing real issues in terms of cybersecurity. So I kind of, as part of that research this week, I've been looking at some of the weaknesses or some of the problems, but I've also been looking at some potential solutions, including third parties and also Microsoft solutions as well. So in this episode, we're gonna take a kind of deep dive into things like password policies, uh, which come obviously part of Active Directory. And I'm gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the really ugly features of it, and what you can do in order to not only secure your environment, but also protect your users as well. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we would love for you to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell up there and come and join our great learning community that I'm trying to build out here. And if you enjoy the video, please give me a big thumbs up. It does make a difference to the channel. Now, questions and comments, as always, get those down below and I would love your uh, feedback on that. So first of all then, let's talk about Active Directory. Let's talk about password policies and some of the disturbing things that I've discovered this week. And also I'd like to talk about uh, how it integrates into Entra ID. Now Entra ID of course is the next generation of Active Directory. Um, but it has some issues when connecting to on-premises systems and specifically uh, Entra ID password protection policy. You'll be familiar with that. So if you're like many companies, the big question is, so Andy, I'm protected, right? Because I'm in hybrid. Um, now Entra, of course, have something called an Entra ID password protection policy. This is it here. And you can find this in the Entra ID admin center. Um, now you might think, hey, well, sure, we have this great feature that we can click on here and we can enable it so we're protected, right? Well, not so much. Um, first of all, a couple of flaws in it. It's available only for premium customers. So you need to have a P1 or P2 license. And also Microsoft use around 500 of the most common passwords along with their variants. So that means things like password 1999, for example, wouldn't go through. But the problem is password 1998 would. Hmm. Um, also, had admins have no visibility of what these passwords are. And admins can, of course, go ahead and add a custom list of about a thousand passwords or a thousand different words. Doesn't handle phrases very well. So past phrases, again, are difficult. Um, the only thing is the word can be no bigger than 17 characters. So already, I kind of get the feeling you're forcing users to kind of focus on old classical technologies. And also, the key thing about the password protection policy is you can only have one per Entra ID tenant, which again, is a potential security issue. Also, there's no enhancements to the Windows 10 or Windows 11 client. So as you can see here, when I, for example, go to change my password, 
It doesn't tell me anything about the password. It doesn't tell me what the rules are or it doesn't provide any guidance. And it's you just kind of feel it could be so much more. And another thing that really bugs me is this. So if I go into, I've got an organizational unit here. And of course, if I want to set a password policy in Active Directory, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, and of course you would go into Edit. And typically, of course, you would then go into your policies and into your Windows settings and security and your policies are here. So if I go into the password policies here, you can see that you, you know, this is the usual. These really haven't changed in many years. And, you know, as looking at Microsoft, you have to wonder why they're not updating. It's pretty obvious that Microsoft are kind of brushing passwords uh, under the carpet. Um, and they're really going all out on MFA. And this is fine for perhaps cloud customers, but not for Active Directory customers. So it looks like there has to be better options for this. And looking at password policies, you have to wonder why on earth did they set these at the computer level rather than the user level? After all, if you think about it, it's users that make mistakes, not computers. So like I said, for this consulting work that I've been doing, I've been doing uh, quite a bit of research. And what I've got is a little tool here. This is called Spec Ops Password Policy. Uh, and it's a tool that I've used a number of times, but it absolutely rocks. So the look and feel is very similar to group policy, but just the layout is so much smoother here. So I'm gonna come up here uh, and you can see that we have a number of options. So I'm a, a big fan of um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as you can see. So I've got my password policies, domain settings. And in here, you have that awesome tool, which is continuously scanning. Andy, what am I scanning for? You're scanning for breached passwords. Um, now, Spec Ops policy constantly monitors up to 4 billion breached passwords. And this really sets it apart um, you've got things like different language files, you've got different templates, and you've got the Spec Ops Password uh, Auditor tool, which of course is free, and you can download that today from their website. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the password policies, and as you can see, um, I've got uh, three policies here at the moment. I've got my default domain policy. Um, and I've got my own little policy here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and let's go ahead and edit it. So when I edit the policy, I've got the option, do you want to enable the password rules of the policy? Enable the passphrase rules. And of course the current kind of best practice is that you use three uh, random words, completely random words. And of course you can configure that and I'll show you that in a moment. But in both cases, you may actually wanna go ahead and actually enable both. Let's have a look at this. So here is my password policy. And you can see that we have a number of sheet tabs. So the start, general settings, password expiration, password rules, the passphrase, and we have that breached password protection that I mentioned. I'll come back to that in one second. So um, you've got options and you can see that it's way more detailed than your st uh, typical Active Directory group policy password settings here. So you can see here, uh, prevent passwords from the local express list. And this is super important, of course, because in many cases, um, passwords are often set to never expire and users might go ahead and actually reuse the same password. Um, force the users to change compromised passwords. So again, this is great. And also you might want to email the users to let them know that one of their passwords has actually been uh, found. Of course, you can see that you get that little template here and you can, you can go ahead and you can customize that as well. So you get the template and you also get the little uh, preview page there as well. Um, now, in this case, I don't need to click on apply. So I'm gonna go into the next tab. Let's have a look at some of the options here. 
So the number of remembered passwords, again, you can increase that exponentially here. You can also set the minimum password age, maximum password age, disallow incremental passwords. So I can't go and use password 1999 and you think, well, okay, I'll maybe use password 1998 because that's not incremental. No, it is. And it would definitely pick that up as well. Um, the minimum number of pass, uh, change characters disallow reusing part of a current password. So, you know, the fact that they've gone and put in the word password or even pass, um, never mind putting a special character in, it would recognize that. How cool is that? Um, also, things like the password reset options. So, again, we have a number of uh, reset options. And again, you get that little message to the user here. So the, the nice thing about this is it's letting the user know exactly what's going on at any time. And again, you can see that on the right hand side there, you get a, a, a nice overview of that. Now, one of my favorite features that you can find in Spec Ops policy um, can be found here in the exploration tab. And this is really nice because it allows you to reward your users for longer passwords. And do remember that longer means stronger. So for example, if I've just got a simple password, then it's prompting me to change every 30 days. But if not, as you can see a long password, it's allowing me to keep it for 700 days. Again, you've got those email settings there. Now we have the password rules. So here we've got, again, minimum, maximum password length. Um, do you want, how many alpha, how many non-alpha characters do you want in there? Things like how many numeric characters. Now, of course, you could make your passwords as complex as you want. But the problem with that is that the users will just end up writing the password down. So this completely defeats the purpose. Um, I also like this feature as well. This is the use the custom dictionary. Always great that you can add your own uh, blocked passwords in there as well. And of course, down here, we also have the disallow username as password. Now, if you've switched on complexity, uh, it will pick that up. But if not, then it won't. Um, and finally, if you're using things like custom keyboards like US, a um, uh, Greek keyboard and you want to block certain characters, then the uh, regular expressions is definitely an option that you want to switch on. Then we come to the passphrase option here. And this, I love this, check it out. So again, must be three words uh, of containing at least six characters. Do not repeat the same word. So they can't use the same word twice. So how many people would do that? Um, also, don't use patterns. And again, it's really looking for quite detailed patterns there, as I've mentioned. And it must not contain the word password. All right. So when talking about complexity, remember that you don't want to make it difficult for the users. You want to make it easy for them to remember. So longer is stronger. So the longer password is much better. So I tend not to use the complexity feature. And then finally, my favorite feature here is the breach password protection. As I mentioned, Microsoft have a small database of the most common passwords and variants, but they do not actively monitor breached passwords. And this is something that really sets Spec Ops apart. The fact that it's consistently and continually monitoring for those um, 4 billion and growing list of breached passwords. And it's so easy to configure here. You've got things like um, upon password change, what do you want me to check? You can force the, the users to change that compromised password, email them, let them know. Again, you can configure that email there. For continuous monitoring here, it's continually monitoring. And this is something that's really quite unique to this particular product, by the way. Again, email them if the user has been found to be compromised. And again, um, you can text them as well via their mobile device. The next thing I want to do is I want to take a quick look at what it looks like from the user's perspective.
So what I want to do now is show you it from the client side. So I'm going to do a control alt delete, which you normally would. I'm going to come up and change my password. And this is really where it gets interesting. So unlike the traditional Windows client, you can see here that SpecUp's password policy shows me exactly the rules that I need to adhere to when it comes to both a password and also a passphrase. And more than that, you can see that it's showing me that reward feature that I showed you for longer means stronger, of course. So uh, again, if I go into the past phrase, it shows me the rules. It shows me what you can't uh, put in. Um, also, don't repeat the, the same word, continuous numbers, uh, and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and um, put in my current password. Okay, and I'm going to change my password. Um, now, as I start typing in the new password, you can see that it's showing you the rules that I've created. So again, it's ticking the, the right boxes, but the fact is I'm only using a short password. Thus, it's saying, okay, that's fine. You can use that, but if you want to kind of get a strong password for 700 days, then ultimately you're gonna need that plus 20 characters for a password there. So let me show you a breached password then. So I'm gonna put in a known breached password. So in this case, I'm typing in YouTube1234, which is a silly password and you would never use it. But you can see here, that it's showing me that the password, when I submit it, it's saying, okay, it's not allowing me to change the password. So even though the passwords match that I've put in here, it's saying it's incorrect, it's, it's not picking it up because you can see that it's on that list of prohibited passwords and I would need to obviously not use that password. All right, so that's a really, really uh, nice uh, feature. So there we have it, Spec Ops password policy. Now, the other thing just to mention here is that, of course, a few years ago, Microsoft had fine-grained passwords. And although these were a great feature and they could allow you to have multiple policies, they didn't really bring any additional functionality. And of course, additionally, they needed that separate interface, which of course made administering it even more complex. So you, you kind of, I you know that Microsoft are really moving towards a passwordless, but as I said earlier, there's still millions of customers out there using passwords. And you have to wonder why on earth Microsoft never updated this. But needless to say, thank goodness, Spec Ops have. So there you have it. After a week of consulting on Active Directory and Active Directory policies, I have to say, yes, I would probably use a Spec Ops password policy. Um, it, it's really doing the work that you kind of feel that Microsoft should have been doing over the last 24 years. It's a, it, Active Directory hasn't changed in so long and it just doesn't cut it with its security anymore. So in my opinion, if you're still running AD, you really do need this feature. Okay, um, I'll put the links down below. So, uh, you know, feel free to go and, uh, and, and read up on the details on it. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed the session, give me a big thumbs up, hit that like button. It does make a difference. And if you've not subscribed, then go ahead, bomb that subscribe button up there, ring that bell and come and join my learning community. Questions and comments, as always, get them down below. That's it for this time. I'll see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.